I haven't seen such an egregious representation of medieval society since Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. Now dig on this. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Classic Movie Banter. Mm. You know, that podcast where me, that fellow Brenton, and that other fellow Nathan... Oh, how do you do? We talk about films that are 20 years, 20 years or older, or in this case... Uh, Just 20 years old, chap. No! We took a winky dink, as they say, down under. And we tell you our special, special acquaintances if those films are worth watching, and more importantly, if they're worth throwing a bloody tea party, inviting all of your mateys around and having a good old cup of joe. You know what I'm saying, Nathan? Oh, don't I? Are we are we on our way to the jousting competition, Brenton? Are we Are we in England, shit, as it were? Are we going to say blimey to the Queen? Yeah, I want to see someone get bloody lanced. That's what I want to see. That's what I want. I feel like our accent's only going to get more and more <laughs> racist as well as yes. we get into this gag. Yes, they are. All our British listeners are like, wow, fuck you guys. How's it feel to be prisoners down under? I'm like, oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it goes, it goes both what it goes both ways. It goes that both. Say. That's what I would have loved to see in this movie, Brenton. That's what A Knight's Tale was missing, just like a real dirty British accent. <laughs> like, yeah. Oi, Gav, you're going for a joust. <laughs> like, Stick him with your large, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another audio snippet. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't care, actually even know like, the third listeners know this. Like, just like, as a running gag between Brenton and me off air. Like, when I'm editing the episodes, oh, he, here he goes sipping his beer, having a good time. So between uh, Brenton and I. As I edit the episodes, I'll, like, take random, like, sentences Brenton says, and I'll just, like, text it to him. <laughs> like, completely out of context. It seems like, like the weirdest shit from this from this show. And it's a good time, isn't it, Brenton? Yeah, I love it. I love it all the time. <laughs> you can see, like, the grin slowly <laughs> fading on Brenton's face. It's like, ah. Uh, <sighs> uh. But yes, we do a podcast here where we talk about movies, and in this case, we're talking about all the mead, all the all the mutton chops, Ooh. all the all the knights, all the armorers. Oh, we're we going to a medieval convention finally, Brenton. Oh, finally! I can put this armor I'm wearing to good use. It's Brenton, why should you be out with your girlfriend, and why should I be out with my left hand when we can just be inside here, just talking about a movie? This is how we're spending Valentine's Day, dude. Sorry, sorry, my girlfriend, but Nathan literally locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> like, oh. We're here celebrating love and our love of cinema. And we've talked about some romantic films in the past, Brenton. So hopefully, this may be the most romantic film of all today. Because there's nothing more romantic than a horse and his boy and his stick. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic combo. Uh, that's what we used to record. Yeah. In A Knight's Tale, as uh, Nathan... In case you didn't guess already, that's what we're talking about this episode. So we're talking about A Knight's Tale, which was released in 2001, and it was directed by Brian Helgeland. Uh, thank <laughs> that you, sounds Brian. like such a like a British name for him. To, like, I'm the director of Brian of Helgeland. <laughs> it stars our very own, and by our, I mean us, our, us Australians' very own, Heath Ledger. He's back. We wish. Uh, it also stars... Um, Paul Bettany, Alan Tudyk, Mark Addy, uh, Rufus uh, Sewell. <laughs> You're sounding so less enthusiastic as you get through the cast. Like, eh, <laughs> this guy. Like, oh, yeah, yeah oh, well, whatever. But dude, he, yeah. he's in it. <laughs> yeah. Reprising the role from Two Hands, the sequel we all wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is where he went with the briefcase of money at the end of the movie. <laughs> he went to medieval England. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe this whole film is just set inside a, a convention. Maybe it's just like some fan... Like, it's it's literally... I like- want to talk about that, Brenton. I've got a theory on that, because you're not wrong, buddy. Maybe it's set during a game of, like, Dungeons and Dragons or something. At, like, some medieval um gathering, I guess. And, and, you know, there's some jousting pit where there's, like, men riding, like, a rocking horse. Like, as they ram each other with, like, pool noodles. You know what I mean? Who knows? Yeah. Who does know, Brenton? Well, guess what, buddy? Since we're at this medieval fair, you know, we're, we're watching all the competitions. Why don't you come into this tent, Brenton? And look, I'm a movie producer. I've trapped you, Brenton. I'm going to sit you down here and I'm going to pitch you this movie, A Knight's Tale. Oh dear, I'm trapped. Can you pitch me the movie? All right, Brenton. So, are you familiar with critically acclaimed medieval poet, Geoffrey Chaucer? I'm not really, but uh, oh. I've heard of the fellow. Oh, Brenton, what are you doing? He's so acclaimed. He's one of the best. He, he essentially, like, almost invented the English language. Like, he did a fuck ton for English prose. Like, And uh, he wrote a bunch of different poems. One is called A Knight's Tale, Brenton. Now, I'm sure you're deeply familiar with the 1387 poem, right? Yeah. <laughs> but if I wasn't, enlighten me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 
case these guys don't know, maybe explain it to them. Oh, of course, Brenton, of course. Well, it's about, you know, a tale of two knights fighting over a broad, as it were, a fair maiden, you know. They're saying, you know what, you're pretty fit, so you gotta be one of us, only one, and so she's gotta choose. And normally, back in the day, if knights wanted to fight, they'd do it with a bloody stick, mate, and they'd ram at each other with a stick. They call it jousting. Are you hooked yet? Um, I've got many questions. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> back continue. up. <laughs> anyway, so there's this critically acclaimed poem by Geoffrey Chaucer. So, you know what I want to do? I want to say, fuck the adaptation of this poem, A Knight's Tale. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just recreate this love triangle, as it were, Brenton. I want oh, to right. <laughs> I want to instead take the bare bones of this plot, of two knights fight, you know, fighting over a chick, and I want to make it about this guy, Heath Ledger. He's a peasant, and he's like, you know what, I bet I can pretend to be a knight to get some honour in the fam, and maybe I'll bum into a hot chick along the way. But Nathan, yes. he's just a peasant. Oh, Brenton, aren't How we all? How could he possibly do that? Well, with the help of his good old friends Hagrid and Vision and together <laughs> <laughs> and together they will go on a magical quest with very little magic and, and go to you know the Olympics of ye old days and try and win a justin comp to the tune of 80s music, Brenton. Welcome to Not Jeffrey Chaucer's A Night's Tale. Nathan, you know, if you actually pitch me that and I and I actually had not seen this film. I'd go watch the movie. That oh, sounds thank you. like a hodgepodge in the best of ways. That just sounds like it is yearning for a watch, as it were. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So But Nathan. Yes. But Nathan, the question I have for you is, does it deserve the watch? <laughs> ah, does it deserve the watch? Look, we're gonna get into that, but you know, I've you know, we've got a great cast, Brenton. We've got Robert Baratheon, he's back from Game of Thrones. We've got Heath Ledger, you know, he's he's back from the Dark Knight, no longer joking about. Instead of the court jester, mate, he's He's going to be bloody impressed in the court just to tell you what. Oui. We've got Paul Bettany, Brenton, acclaimed actor Paul Bettany. You know, he was pretty fucking weird in Da Vinci Code, but he's going to be maybe less weird in this one. Up for debate. We'll maybe. see. Maybe. So get ready. Get ready, everyone. We're here. It's a night's nice tale. Let's talk about it. So Nathan, does it live up to the hype? That was that was a lot of hype. That was a lot of hype. Speaking of hype, speaking of hype, listeners, have a listen to this. So Brenton has been tooting his horn this whole bloody podcast about a night's nice tale. I think it was like I think it was like the first fucking seven seasons we did that you mentioned a knight's tale of like movie experiences you're like oh boy do i want to be a knight and like brenton we abolished the aristocracy for a reason in this country so but oh boy oh boy <laughs> i'd still kind of like to be a knight and ram dudes with a stick oh would boy you, the lawsuits that would ensue <laughs> brenton it would it would not be pleasant for either party oh boy so let, so let's let's bloody set the table brenton at this like stupid medieval banquet we've we've gone to so like you bloody were raised on this movie right you had this for every fucking meal of your day right you adore this movie, right? I, I mean, I wouldn't say I had it for every meal, but I remember enjoying it as a kid and thinking it was great. And I still, and like, I still like, re- like, I retained that view yes. throughout the years that I thought this movie was a good time. It was a fun time. It was a good old rom com set in the jousting times. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there was, and there was nothing else quite like it. No, and and I I agree with you, Brendan. There is, you know, like a rare tumor. There is nothing quite like it. So, like, <laughs> but sometimes. But you still have to cut it out, even though it's rare. You do, you do. You still got to terminate that. So, so here we are, Brett, with a knight's tale. And you tell you what, if I saw this at age twelve or something like that, this would be like one of my favorite movies, right? <laughs> I, this is this is an adolescence dream, Brenton. Quite literally, in fact. I think this is an adolescence dream. I'm not surprised if the screenwriter just like went up to his son and said, "Son, who probably grew up in the '80s, what's what's what do you want in a medieval story?" And he's like, there's going to be hot girls and there's going to be jousting and and there's going to be butts in it. We're going to see a lot of butts. And, 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 and you know, the screenwriter's like kid. nodding, like writing it. Yeah, the screenwriter's like, what a, great what idea. A strange child. <laughs> great idea. We're going to take you to therapy afterwards. <laughs> okay, Nathan. So you said that this movie's good for 12 year olds. But yes. what about for you? <laughs> Look, look, Brenton, I had fun with this movie, you know? I had a lot of fun Good. with this movie. I'm glad. This is a fun time, you know? If I was stepping off the roller coaster, I'd give it a woohoo. I'd be like, you know what? Let's fucking ride this coaster again. But was it a yeah. good coaster, Brenton? I'm looking back at the roller coaster, and I'm, I'm noticing a few tracks that may be a little bit crickety. I'm seeing some wheels out of place. I don't know if this is a good coaster, Brenton. I think I think this is a fine one, if anything. Do you feel... Do you, so, so, so what you're saying is this is not in the category of high art. Brenton, we've done such a... <laughs> 
credit. We've done such claimed films on the show, such as The Apartment, Sunset Boulevard, Three Amigos. Who knows? We've done some. We've done them all, and I think this is probably leaning more towards the Three Amigos route, where like this is a communal experience where you sit down with friends, you just watch some dumb shit happen, and you laugh at it. And that's what this movie is, Brenton. Yeah, dude, this is like a solid seven or eight out of ten. Like Brenton, it's still yeah. This is this is me personified. It's still <laughs> good. It's still good, but just don't think about it too much because it'll come back to look, haunt you. Look, in all seriousness, I think this is actually pretty good for what it is. Like in all, in all, in it all, is. you know, like it is. It's a good movie. It's it's far, Like it's not it's not breaking any barriers. It's no, not, it's not bloody Citizen Kaning its ass. No, it's, all it all it's doing is Heath Ledger doesn't want to have dreads anymore, right? Yeah. And he wants to be a handsome man. He wants to ride a horse and ram ram things with his lance. This movie, and, this, uh, person, this movie feels <laughs> like a shit post. Like seriously, like it just feels like like a meme that like like someone like photoshopped like maybe like Heath Ledger and just, like some garb, and he's like, oh, it would be funny if you met Robert Baratheon. And then they made it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like totally. I I want to know the the thing I do want to know is how the fuck the director roped these actors into this. You know what I mean? Like how did he pitch the project to them? Dude, if someone pitched me this, like you pitched me this at the start of the episode i'd sign on like this sounds oh, like <laughs> fun this sounds like so much fun it does like, sound like and fun for sure they had fun doing this like oh yeah what a time like oh yeah we're gonna do this story about how a peasant becomes a knight <laughs> and, he, and, he, and at the same time it's like a modern rom-com we're gonna cast heath ledger from such films as 10 things i hate about you he's gonna yeah. be a knight he's gonna want to be a knight he's gonna want to get the the dame yeah and he's gonna enter like jousting competitions and whatnot he's gonna give up the sword ring but he's gonna go for the jousting and then also we're gonna have it set to like the queen catalog you know what, what I mean? And, oh, <laughs> it just makes no sense. And have women with like the most outrageous hairdos you've ever seen oh in God. the modern era back in the day. And and just have it this feel good, like kind of uh, rom com adventure vibe. I haven't seen such an egregious representation of medieval society since Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. <laughs> this is this is just this is not period accurate. And it's so funny as well, because like, you know, the director cop shit back in the day for like, you know, putting in, you know, 80s music, which I think elevates the work. I think the movie's better better for it frankly having all these I scenes. agree because the movie embraces it it runs with it right I don't want to spoil things but it's in the opening credits so I'm going to say it anyway so basically one of my favourite moments in this move, movie linked with the uh, 80s soundtrack actually I don't know if this is my favourite I don't, know if it, I don't many, actually man. know if it's good or not but it's it's the most ridiculous thing is that like at the start We Will Rocky plays over the opening credits and uh at towards the end of it, obviously we get the guitar solo. The you know what I mean, like <laughs> yeah. the classic. The shot we have is of these like bugle players, like at the jousting event, like playing their bugles. And then as the song stops, they stop playing as though like they were doing the guitar solos, it's but so on their stupid. bugles. And it makes no sense. No. But we're here for it, Nathan. Because you, you know what, this film is like unadulterated fun. Like it really is like yes. blatant summer blockbuster kind of like, which is funny because it didn't make that much money. But like it is such a like like fun popcorn movie, you know. It's it's not designed yes. to make sense. There's no plot. You're not here for plot. Like what? Heath Ledger tries to win a comp. Like that's the only thing that's really going on. <laughs> and for some reason, like you know, some asshole knight's like, Heath Ledger wants to win a competition. <laughs> Fuck him. Like, Jesus. <laughs> I must say that villain is so fucking weak. Like he's such a he's such a discount Jude Law. He's just like this snooty. <laughs> Just like, just like he's a discount Jude Law. That's a great comment. He is. He is though. Yeah. Like he looks. He even looks a bit like him as well. Like he's just like this. This like stick up an ass. Just like got everything handed to him. Like he's, he isn't even that good. Like he's not even that talented. Like he gets his. You know, think you can't really spoil this movie, but we will. Like you know, things happen to him. Like he's not that impressive. So like he's fucking weak. I had no patience for him, frankly. I felt the weakest points of this movie was when it actually tries to have a plot, which you think I shouldn't be criticizing. I hear you, dude. Actually. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I get what you mean about the plot because there's flashbacks and shit in this yeah. movie about like going back and being like, oh, you know, like uh, where did Heath come from? You know, did he come from <laughs> it's down a question under? we ask ourselves every day. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, you know, how did Heath become a how how did he become a squire? We need to know. Yeah, why where where is Heath going and what does he want in life? You know, we need to understand where he's come from <laughs> to know where he wants to go. I could say see you in like a newscast, just like holding up the mic, just like saying this to the camera. <laughs> and where is he now? <laughs> but but every time we have these flashback moments where it's meant to delve into this character, it's like, dude, I just want to get back to some freaking horse jousting. Yeah. And I want to get back to Paul Bettany, like, giving, like, some rowdy speech, oh you know what God. I mean? I want to get back to Robert Baratheon, like, handing lances out like they're lollipop sticks, you know? Jeez. I want to get back to Alan Tudyk threatening to, like, punch um Paul Bettany's naked balls, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just want to get amongst <laughs> it, you know, and, and have some fun. I want to, I want, I want more of, like, Heath Ledger, like, dancing in some, like, medieval-type 
courting scene, you know, where he's like having some groovy times with some like girl, you know, and having some romantic entanglements. Like, I, I just, I'm all about that. I want, I want, I want the crew to write a romantic yeah. interlude together and send it to this girl that he's trying to woo. Like, that's all fun. I don't want to go back and learn about like young peasant Heath. Yuck. <laughs> yuck to the, uh, yuck to peasants. Oh, get them away from me. But it's true. Like, you're mentioning like a lot of good characters and a lot of good scenes in this movie, Breton, and it's chock a full of them. And like, I feel like this is a movie that would get better on rewatchability. But in saying that, you need to know going in, listeners, that this is such a laddie film. It's so laddie. I think like women have nothing yes. to do in this. There's like one love interest and then one armor who has something to do a little bit. But like, that's yes. it. This movie feels on the same tone that like a boy's locker room would feel, like in like like year seven or year eight. I wouldn't. It's, I wouldn't. I I wouldn't necessarily go that far because boys' locker rooms can be quite horrendous. And this isn't. <laughs> yeah. No. No. But I would say no. But I would say it's not as like I would not say it's as, it's not as directly insulting as a boys' locker room. Replace the like jousting with like a towel fight, and this is essentially the same thing. I <laughs> I get. I know what you mean about laddie. So so let me let me give some context as well. Okay. I mean, like I watched this. I watched this past week. Um, this film this past week two times. Once by myself, and and the second time I watched it with my my partner. And uh, we watched it as like a little like, you know, like, oh, let's pop on this like fun rom-com thing and like see how <laughs> we go. And and to be honest, I was like just interested to see what, like to hear what she thought about it. And now they're no longer together. Yeah. And now <laughs> and she said, I think you need to like reevaluate, you know, your life. And, and she sent me away. <laughs> there wasn't even a movie, listeners. Well, actually, we didn't actually watch the film. I just tried to reenact it in front of her. And, oh, uh, you that'd know, be people amazing. got hurt. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, in reality, what happened was I said, yes. what do you think of the movie? And she was like to me, oh, yeah, I had a great time. You know, that was that was just like a fun like simple whatever like fun movie and i was like exactly i was like so what do you reckon i should rate it on classic movie banter <laughs> and and then she said to me wait you do a podcast and i was like Shh, never mind <laughs> uh, <and> he- <laughs> <laughs> like oh shit where's obliviate <laughs> brenton that doesn't work <laughs> no she said no i think I, she said like i mean like i just give it a thumbs up i was like she was like it's it's a fun time like as like she was like as and this is the comment and this is kind of like going into what you were just talking about, Nathan. Yes. As long as you know what you're getting yourself into, you know, don't expect like the best things in sliced bread. Don't expect something that's reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Expect like a stupid idea that's been, that's, that's, that's gotten the green light and uh, <laughs> it's a bit of fun. There's some fun rock music and a, and a, and a simple romance plot about some dude that wants to bang dudes with sticks. Yeah. And win. And, and win. And that's it. <laughs> but okay. I, I, actually, I actually want to talk about this movie in like all seriousness because like I, I think I've said the quote dude that bangs other guys rams other guys with sticks like seven times on the show so far <laughs> so I will say as well let's just get to some performances something that okay. I can actually talk about yeah uh, is that you know I think Heath Ledger as usual is like really talented he's a really talented guy he's, he's very good. charming doesn't he remind you so much of Chris Hemsworth in this movie yeah totally he he's got that so whole so like he is vibing Thor in fact to the point Absolutely. where I thought if he had lived I reckon Heath Ledger would have been Thor he, he nails it so yeah. well in this I I, I really like Paul Bettany as well. I think Paul Bettany. What is like, Paul Bettany doing Paul, in this movie? Paul 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 Bettany's just been like let off the lead. You know what I mean? Oh. And he's just been like, it's like it's like when I let my dog Zelda, like I let her go at the park. I'm like, run Zelda, like you know, like go have fun, <laughs> go interact with the dog. She's like, yes, I will, and she just sprints away. And you know, I I'm, could so see the moment Paul Bettany read the script and just like got so excited he had so much dialogue. He would have just been like, yeah, because he just gives these such long winded speeches that just I don't think I ever got used to them. I think I was just like, oh, here we fuck and go. <laughs> like, I just made peace with them. I think, I think like, the supporting cast is really fun. Like, I, apart from the villain, the villain's probably the character I have the most issues with, but I, yeah. I like, I like, I like Mark Addy. I like Alan, Alan Tudyk. I like Banter. I like their little family but dynamics. what is like, Alan Tudyk in this movie, dude? What is he doing? I actually, okay. What is wrong with them? Because there's something wrong with but them. But I think, I think he's just a simple peasant with anger management issues. <laughs> Okay. But, you know, Bentley's got, like, a b- bloody gambling problem. That still doesn't compare to, like, bloody Alan Tudyk in this movie. He's just... And, like, what's his accent and the facial expressions? The facial expressions he makes in this movie. Christ. It's, like, overacting to yeah. a bone, right? No, I, I fully agree. But, you know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I really like Mark Addy and I like, like, Alan Tudyk adds something, you know? It's like, why not? Why He's just he's just having a good time. I think he's the weakest out of the all the supporting cast. But, to be honest, he's not really given much to do. And he's just, like, no. be angry and, like, get angry at 
Paul Bettany all the time. There's a few good interactions where it's like, you know, haha, very, very funny. I actually really like the armorer in this movie. I like the 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 woman yeah. blacksmith. Uh, I think she's really cool. I always thought she was really cool. And I, I wish she was in it a bit more, to be honest. But when she is there, you know, she's she adds some dynamics to the screen. She's a great, she's got a great uh, screen presence. And it's a shame I just haven't really seen this actor in uh, much else. So I wish I could see uh, her in more things. Oh, she's definitely done other work I've recognized her in because I looked her up afterwards. It's, um, oh, fuck, what's she been in? Oh, she was in something you and I've both seen, Brenton. This is the part where Nathan oh, really? something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, wait, can I can I just read something while we while we're on this while you look something up? I just want to re- I wanted to read up Alan Tudyk's character what? I want to read up his like description. Oh, perfect, please. <laughs> A violent young squire <laughs> who is obsessed with the greater things in life. He grows desperate, but is a good friend of William. Like, what is this question? What the freaking shit does that mean? Oh, uh, can you please like, I change your LinkedIn profile to have that instead? Oh, oh my gosh! I just like looked up this actress, yeah. and something just absolutely blew my mind. Did you finally work out who she is? Yeah, she's the Stevia chick from Breaking Bad. Yeah, she's Lydia. She's Lydia in Breaking Bad. I mixed it in with that goddamn shit put in your tea. <laughs> <laughs> and she, you can see that face like she makes where she's like, oh shit, I'm, I've been poisoned. This sucks. <laughs> it's so funny as well because she uh, spends that whole, either she spends that whole last scene of her, spoilers for Breaking Bad, by the way. She like spends that whole like final scene of her just in that cafe thinking she's so won over Walter White. She's like, um, well, no, actually, I'm not going to negotiate with you. And meanwhile, Walter's like, yeah, you're going to fucking die, Lydia. <laughs> yeah. And Jesse uh, Plemons is like, oh, please marry me. Uh, That's uh, right. Armor. Have you seen that Breaking Bad sequel? Yeah, yeah, El Camino. Yeah, man. Yeah, there was a deleted scene that they they cut from it where, like, he calls Lydia and, like, (laughs) and and he's, like, on the phone to her and he's, like, trying to, like, contact her. He's like, oh, maybe she'll call back. And then, meanwhile, like, she's just, like, dying of ricin. You're just like, oh, poor thing. But in this movie, she gets... No ricin in this one. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I agree. She does really, really well. Speaking of characters, I think, that are weaker, I really... Don't like we've already spoken about the villain, so like we don't. He's a bit, he's a bit one note, and it doesn't yeah. really make sense why he's so upset. That like I guess it's his pride, maybe why he's so good. He's like, oh damn, these goddamn country knights. I'm so elitist, and that's basically his character. Yeah. But the other one, I really, I kind of have never vibed with. Like I never vibed with this character as a kid too. Is actually the romantic interest. Yeah, she's a bit bland, isn't she? Like Jos- Jocelyn, Jocelyn. I just never felt like I never really believed her, and I never felt like she has like really any chemistry with Heath. Also, it's so funny because like her defining characteristic for Heath, at least, is that she's really pretty, right? Like, she's so beautiful and he yeah. keeps on saying this. But, like, weirdly yeah. as well, her lady-in-waiting is equally as beautiful. <laughs> so, like... Yeah. Like, they're both stunning women and, like, they're both just kind of sitting about just kind of waiting for a guy. And, like, they all kind of seem to be ignorant of the whole situation. Like... Well, I think with a shame with uh, Jocelyn, this character, is that I think, like, on paper, like, there actually is a lot you could probably do with it as an actor. I think, like, it could be a bit, like, she's a bit... She's written in a way that I think she can be really, like, kind of feisty and, like, really, like, fight for her own and, you know, yeah. what she wants. A real layer of sorts, you know? She's, like, yeah, she's yeah, she, she's quite sarcastic as a character, which I like. But I feel like this actor just, like, doesn't offer anything. She's just, like, she's so bland. Like, yeah. it, it's just, like, everything's at face value. And I'm like, really? Because she's, she's even got, like, an interesting character arc. She's, like, meant to be a nun or something like that. She's meant to be, like, you know, in, like, the church, you know? But then, like, maybe yeah. maybe maybe Heath is the forbidden fruit that she needs to taste. So. Yeah. When, when Mance Tyrell from Game of Thrones is all like, you desecrate the house of God! And you're like, hey... <laughs> Hey, hey, Mace Torrell, how's it going, dude? Yeah, yeah, um, that was a great moment. Yeah, <laughs> but you're not wrong, man. Like, like, th- there's definitely something you could have done with her. Like, like, she could have been like that Princess Leia character, where you know she's she's a royalty, yeah. but she wants to break out. You know, he throcks up, and she's like, "Aren't you a little small to be a knight?" And then he just says, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm here to rescue." You. But sadly, yeah. no, she just kind of sits about. Also, weirdly dressed from the 20th century, like wearing outfits and hairstyles from <laughs> today. <laughs> like, I've always loved it, dude. I've uh, always liked it. Like, I've always been like, it makes no sense but i'm all about it like i'm, I'm so about it i love the modern like kind of references in this <sighs> movie i'm like oh this is so stupid but i love it i love it so much yeah yeah so like like there's there's things to latch on to like comedic wise and that kind of stuff as far as technical things like i thought the sound design was really good actually out of all things i think the sound design is really good and i think actually surprisingly the filmmaking in terms of the cinematography is quite inventive there's moments <laughs> where like the camera is used in like interesting ways yeah. and i'm like i wouldn't have picked to do that like, that's not just, like, a freaking close-up. Like, you know, it's like, let's put the camera under here and see what it looks like. Let's yeah. let's do this shot. Let's pan the, the pan this way. Let's dolly that way. And you're like... Whoa, we're on a ride. You could have really thrown in the towel here. But I can see this is a passion project and you've uh, you've you've really tried. So, so well done. <laughs> I also think as well, that's something I'd like to give credit uh, to this film for, is that I think it's got heart. 
I think that's what ties it all together and makes yes. it a good time. Is that like I think it's got plenty of heart, and that's it goes what for the heart. kind of, and I think that's what saves it. Yeah, because a film like it's a, it's amazing, honestly. It, on, it is amazing how good this movie is. It could have been so much shittier. Like, like it is like yeah. a knife's throw away from like being such a shitty film. But I think what holds it up is what you've just articulated. I think it's the performances. I think it's the fact the film knows what it is. And then furthermore, I think yep. it is so ridiculous that half the time you're just gobsmacked, going, "I can't believe they're doing this right now." It's just so stupid. Yeah. Like, honestly, I watched this dead sober and I kind of wish I did have a beer watching this. Like, it would be such a good film just to unwind to, you know? You should have done it. I had a beer while I watched it and I had the best old oh, time. When, when do you not, Brenton? Oh, it's a, listeners, uh, text him now, please. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, do we, should we rate it, dude? You're fond of me lobster, ain't you? I think this is a really fun time. Like, it's a really, it's it's a good movie. It's a fun movie. It's really fun. It's, it's fun if you just want to put something on on a Thursday night. It's perfect for having your mates around be like let's watch something and have a laugh and just like have a couple of drinks and just watch something like perfect movie I'd give it a thumbs up I'd watch it again I think I'm with you man like yeah I think I'm gonna give it a thumbs up like it's amazing it is good as it is frankly like I, I don't know yeah. if it lives it up to it could have been an absolute shit show it yeah. really could have like it's a miracle it's as good as it is and that shouldn't be the only reason alone that you watch something like this like, like Brandon's been talking about Night's Tale for most of the podcasts that we've been doing you know classic movie banter so like it's not worth that level of hype but as like it's, it's probably the same advice I give Three Amigos almost but when we had Luke on it's like yeah just like it's just fun man if you just want fun to have some fun with this just take it all off have fun just go just do it yeah just 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 go do it just, just go uh, far just just stop uh, it just but keep duh. going uh. to we spoil this thing is yeah let's spoil it fuck it you spoiled it. What? The movie. Oh. Can we talk about this theory? I, I really want to start here, Brenton. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so oh, I think shit. there is credible evidence that A Knight's Tale starring Heath Ledger is set in the modern day. I think this can be a thing. I think I it's it's not set in ye olden days, right? Yep. So there's okay. a couple things that indicate this, right? First and foremost, the most obvious point, yes, the music, right? The audience members are clapping and singing along to them, right? So it's in the world. Like, we see them getting around it. They all know the lyrics to these 80s tunes. So this makes me think that it's not just like a soundtrack thing we have in the background. These people are actively getting around it, right? Yes. Thing number two. Okay, Paul Bentley, even though he says he's Geoffrey Chaucer, Brenton Bentley is not Geoffrey Chaucer. <laughs> like, in every way, shape, or form, <laughs> this is not what the poet Geoffrey Chaucer is like. So, I like to think that Paul Bentley stumbled upon this medieval fair, right? As the actor Paul Bentley, right? No distinction between the two. And he just suddenly sees this medieval fair and thinks, okay, who's someone medieval? Oh, Geoffrey Chaucer. Who can spur a lot of bullshit? Probably Geoffrey Chaucer. And so he just stumbles into this little fake world and just pretends to be the poet. And because it's a medieval fair, everyone kind of just goes along with it. Hey, man, I I don't, I don't think, I think it's quite a fun theory. I think it kind of ruins the movie if we're like, oh, yeah, it's just all out of medieval fair. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. Like, I think it's a fun thing to think about. And it's, like, pretty cool to be like, because it doesn't really make sense, like, how he comes out on top in this movie at all. Like, it doesn't make sense. That he gets, like, claimed as a knight. Also, like, he's got a blind dad that's been missing him. Maybe, like, maybe it's, like, a murder mystery. Maybe they get given characters going in and he commits. Also, the final lance of the tournament, he, like, literally wears no armor and and, like, goes up against, like, a fully armoured knight and somehow wins. You know what That's I mean? True. Like, it doesn't make sense. That's true, but you go to, like, bloody, like, bike shows or whatever that is, and, like, they're almost doing, like, death-defying stunts and they still pull that shit off, like... Dude, dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. A horse running full speed and a guy holding a giant spear with, like, an <laughs> anvil on the end of it rams you with it and it's so the force is so much that the stick like splinters on you no you don't survive that without armor that's that's a, that's a very very good point like okay but, but okay okay point number three to bring it back then okay speaking of heath's armor brenton it's got a bloody nike tick on it i reckon that like little like you know <laughs> blacksmith entrepreneur <laughs> yeah. she's just like you know what nike is sponsoring this whole endeavor maybe the armor's so good from nike you know they make good things Get the shoes, why not? That, hey, maybe he survives it, you know? He's like, I could handle a spear if I got some Nike armor. I gotta say, I adore that they somehow managed to work product placement into this fucking medieval period piece. Like, it's so, like, there's literally... There's literally a scene that's all like, oh man, this is shit, but feel the movement. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, let's at least try it. Gets rammed. I didn't feel a thing. Nike. Oh, <laughs> it's so it's so fucking stupid. I love it though. Like It's great. Oh. I love it too. So yeah, look, yeah, if there's product placement, all I'm saying is give it a thought, you know? Maybe maybe it's a thing. Like There's a point of this. The modern day is so prevalent in it. It's even like beyond the year 2001. There's a scene that's essentially just Tinder, if you remember. Like, <laughs> yeah. like Heath, I just got to send like a letter to like the 
the the his like his mistress at one point and like all of them like gather around like his letter the same way a bunch of mates would gather around a guy's phone who's on tinder and they're all kind of like yeah. helping him like compose this love letter it's tinder man i really enjoyed that scene too because it, it was it was so like it was so much fun like watching them all be like <laughs> i had this long lost love and this is what i said to them or this is what they said to me and then next minute it's like in the letter and it's like being read out and it's yeah, yeah it's, it's just a fun scene on the back of that what did i want to talk about next yeah it was one of those moments i was like oh this movie's got hard good on it and the other moment that i think is really kind of underrated actually in this movie is a performance-based moment because we're saying during the uh non-spoiler section that you know like all the flashback stuff all like fuck just get us back to the tournament yeah. get us back to the action like let's just get to the to the action yeah but one of the moments that it really pays off is when heath decides to go see his daddy you know what i mean like in yeah the of london and like you see blind old daddy do um <laughs> doing his fishing net but this actor is so good this this actor is too good for this movie yeah i like, know this, this it's like they told him he was in like a drama for being blind and it's like he's trying to get the oscar for it like he's he's committing he's doing like this amazing blind acting but it's like the acting as well like of this scene when he realizes slowly realizes that this night that everyone like his his name they're all screaming is actually his son yeah and his eyes well up and you're like holy shit like, i know this it is comes like out really of fucking nowhere, touching man. and heartfelt like it was it was like yeah totally it's like one of these big payoff moments and you're like oh wow like you know i get now why we had those flashbacks but damn this actor like really sold this and i'm like really feeling something in this moment and then the moment finishes and you're like all right back to yeah back to dumb shit ramming things yeah i know i, I love the moment as well where like um like his girlfriend brings the father to like the comp and she has to like explain to him that he's one because he's kind of just like vacantly just like staring around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's about like everyone's celebrating and, and she's like no 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 no, he won and he's like oh oh right hey <laughs> he's just like yeah. dancing so about good. yeah oh he's so good dude there's yeah like i lo- i thought he was really good i was sold by his performance as well one of my favorite scenes in the movie was the dance scene it has to be like yes it's so fucking good and it comes out of nowhere as well because like he's like oh shit we got to get going and then she's like nah let's do a fucking dance and he's like oh if it means i can spend time with you sure so they rock up to this like dance like i don't know bull or whatever it is and like you can see Heath just decided to like make up some bullshit choreography as he's like trying to teach some dance from like this like random nation that he's from which exists by the way i think it's in <laughs> austria and then she starts going along with it and it suddenly segues into this insane like choreographed dance number and what's the tune brenton that they're dancing to i'm not sure i'll look it up it's like some you. 80s ballad yeah it's so funny to see these like random wavy actions that Heath is clearly making up and everyone for some reason just knows the choreography it's such a good commentary on how like films just randomly have like random characters dance to something and they happen to dance perfectly it's just like it's such a slap in the face to that it's done so ironically yeah yeah i love that the film has that moment i can't really find this song there's a list of songs but i'm not sure which one it is yeah it's one of, it's it's good like look up the youtube clip alone listeners like it's so fucking good. it's a gro- it's a it's a groovy time yeah, yeah i like how like I, I like the whole like that whole segment of the movie because like we have the lead in basically where like he's like we gotta get to fucking this town to do the next tournament like let's go like i didn't win fucking hell everyone's like oh no and no sorry paul all like oh man like no no you can't go you gotta make an appearance like to know to go to the dance for your lady he's like no fuck that we gotta go and then like he's uh the lady in waiting like rocks up and uh Robert Baratheon's all like <clears throat> and then like <laughs> he's all like oh shit oh no and she's like the lady wants to know what type of clothing you're gonna wear and he's like oh I don't know and Robert's all like it's gonna be green bro and she's like okay cool sweet and then he has to learn to dance and then he goes to the dance and yeah then, like, that's right yeah like so so it's this whole saga in the middle it's, of this it's, movie. it's a whole like subplot and when they were learning how to dance did it remind you brenton of when they were learning how to dance of when mcgonagall was teaching hogwarts students how to dance it has that vibe doesn't it has it that does. has that goblet of fire vibe yeah especially the dance instructor at this like at this event yeah he's all like yes gilderland teach us a dance from gilderland <laughs> and he's like jesus man like for fuck's sake man oh. i just want to like have a drink and go home you know like when he was like instructing everyone on how to dance i was just kind of waiting for like maggie smith to rock up and just being like inside every boy a lion waits to pounce. <laughs> She's just like <laughs> grabbing Heath by like the hand. That's what I mean. He has he has that vibe. Yeah. But speaking of which, dude, like honestly, if someone was like, oh yeah, this is a dance from my home country, it's kind of exactly the same as like this dance that everyone knows, but it's just got a clap on the end yeah. when you buy it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I love that they 
all just buy it as well. They're like, oh, yes, yes, of course. Of and they're course. all like, holy shit, I never thought of a clap on the end of that. Like, oh, it's just... What innovation. It's quite it's, funny. It's just, so, it's just a good commentary on how fucking stupid all that shit was. Like, you know, bless the fact that there's, like, dancing in this movie. I think it matches, like, the... I, I would have been very upset if we just had the songs and no dance. You know what I mean? In fact, this movie needed more dancing, if anything. Yes, agreed 100%. Just bring on all the dancing and I will be a happy, happy, happy night. Can we talk about how fucking stupid the trophies are in this movie? Yes, we should. <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad. So wait, can we talk about the first one? We'll talk about them in order. Okay. So, okay. So the first... The first <laughs> this is the real chat we need to have about this movie. Yeah, yeah. So in the opening scene, he wins this trophy, which is a fucking golden peacock feather. Oh my goodness. Right? Yeah. Like he wins, he wins a golden peacock feather, right? Which he holds aloft and it's like, oh yeah, well done. And I'm kind of like, oh, that's like literally useless. The next thing he wins for winning, he wins um the sword. He wins the sword at yes. this tournament. So he wins, uh, but he wins like, uh, you know, he, he's the best swordsman at the competition. And he wins, for some reason, a golden statue of a man like jousting on a horse, which you think would have been the prize for the jousting competition. But no, they give it to the swordsman, which I thought was absolutely bizarre. Right. Agreed? Yeah. I don't know why they do that. I think because it's just literally worthless to them at this point. Like they just don't need it. I mean, they literally break every single trophy that they get given, right? I know. It's great. I like how like those gambling guys rock up and they're all like, we need to be paid. And then like <laughs> literally Heath just like chops this thing's head off and just like throws the gold to them. Yeah. Like, imagine being that, like, you know, you're, you're you're some lowly peasant and then suddenly some knight like chops the head off his golden statue that he's just won and just like gives it to you. You'd be like, all right, cool. Cool, <laughs> cheers. Thanks, mate. <laughs> cheers, bro. It's just like, because they're, they're so shitty as acting as well. Like those little gambling guys, they're just like, like come on, naked Paul Bentley. It's like, first off, you trust naked Paul Bentley to like pay you back bets. It's like, what are you bloody doing, mate? You're going to the wrong gambling house. You know what I mean? The fact, yeah. that, the fact that they like go up to, you know, Heath Ledger and they're like, I don't like you. My friend doesn't like you either. And like, they're trying to like bully him to get like the trophy back. It's like, yeah, like you just, you're just barking up the wrong tree. I don't bark up Heath Ledger's tree at any point. Oh God, no. Because he- you know, I know not to mess with Heath. No God, no, he'll kill us all. You know, it's just, this film has a lot of dumb moments in it, Brenton. I, my favorite one out of all of them, frankly, this might even be my favorite part in the movie. There's a scene where like Heath Ledger is like, you know, chained up or whatever. And like, you know, he's in front of the <laughs> yeah. crowd and like the crowd is like <laughs> booing at him. Like, you're not a knight. Like, how dare you? And everyone's like angry. He's in like the middle of a crowd. And there's a small child that just walks up to Heath Ledger and just like slaps him in the face. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's so uh, I wouldn't good. even say it's a slap. It's just like a little like pat on the head. Oh. It's like how I would like like pat my dog like once on the head of like a tap. And everyone's like, oh yeah, get him. And it's like, he just taps him <laughs> on the head. And you're like, that's weird. And the face Heath Ledger makes after being like, like hit by this child. It's the funniest shit I think I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh, it's too good. Oh. Also, can we talk about it in that scene? Because like speaking of ridiculous that yes. uh, a historical figure known as um, Edward the oh, Black yeah. Prince rocks up, He's right? in this. I forgot about him. That's right. <laughs> the deus ex machina, Edward himself. Yeah, exactly. Like, so he comes in and, like, makes everything right and makes William a knight yeah, in his own for right. For no real reason. Yeah. For, yeah. And the reasoning is, is because at some jousting event, he was all like, Will found, or Heath found out, basically, that, oh, no, you're, you're actually uh, jousting against uh, Prince Edward, right? And everyone's like, oh, no, you gotta, you gotta, like, you know, oh, shit, you gotta, like, throw in the <laughs> towel because we, we can't, we can't, we can't hurt the future king he's all like nah fuck it he, he endangers himself he like jousts him or whatever and then like the prince like respects that he's like oh you're you're a good guy you let me like have a go and he's like yeah, yeah i did <laughs> and that is worth a knighthood yeah like, i really? know no wonder edward bloody died in real world history spoiler alert for history i guess but like you know what i mean it's just like, yeah it's just a recipe for disaster it makes me think like in previous night comms just did just anyone that fought him just get a knighthood like and he's like like the king like <laughs> yeah. the king like summons all of his knights for war and it's like all these like just like drop kicks <laughs> that he's just like <laughs> yeah, given yeah. knighthoods from competitions like no wonder he lost the wars up later on like geez like i i, I found like yeah i found it went okay like he, he wasn't that interesting frankly like who sorry who like, like the bloody prince the black prince like i was like oh, oh yeah yeah he was he was all right He's fine. He's right. Can we talk about Heath Ledger's dreadlocks in this movie? Oh my goodness, what is this hairstyle, Brenton? <laughs> this is like some like Anakin Skywalker episode two level shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this yeah. This maybe the dumbest haircut I've seen. Wisely, the filmmakers decide to get rid of this haircut as soon as humanly possible. Is it just so we can see the transfer? Like Heath just gets even better. Like Heath Ledger is a bloody handsome dude, so they think, how can we make him more handsome? Yeah, I know. We'll make him less handsome at the start of the movie, and then suddenly make him more handsome. It's like, I mean, like, but what peasant is gonna look like this? Seriously. Oh. Oh, it was yeah. like it was so, it was so oh, yeah, off putting. But then what's so funny is is that in the flashbacks when he's like you know six, he's still got the same. Oh my god! Haircut. 
He looks like, oh, he looks like Anakin in like episode one in Phantom Menace. Just like this stupid Padawan. Just like right at the end when it, like, remember the end of like Phantom Menace when like that fucker's like holding up the orb at the end and we still finally see Anakin with his shitty little braid? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that moment. I'm like, get it out of here. I don't want any of this. Like, oh, totally. it's horrendous. Brenton, as much as I love this movie, this this has reached another famous Nathan boiling point for me. Because there's something that happens oh, in this movie that a lot of movies do that I'm finally sick of it, Brenton. We've had such classics as people in cowboy taverns looking over at characters. I don't like it. Here's another thing I don't like in movies, Brenton. Heath Ledger gets stabbed, right? He gets genuinely <laughs> stabbed. He gets, like, fucking punctured yeah. in the middle of a jousting competition. He can barely breathe at points. He needs medical attention. And then after this, like, little moment, he's like, oh, oh, you know what? I'll still do the bloody comp. And he gets up and he still bloody wins or whatever it is. So he still does it. I am sick to death, Britain, yes. of movies where characters get either shot or stabbed or seriously injured and they just kind of like shrug it off and then like they just continue with whatever they were doing and then succeed because Brenton I don't know about you but in real life if I get fucking knocked to the floor if I get a fucking stab if I get knocked to the floor I'm out so like I do not know what these characters are doing so this goes back to what I was saying before when I said he wins the last like round of the joust with no armor having been like stabbed through like his chest oh. basically and not just stabbed like he's had a lance put through him right yes so it's a, it's it's a different ball game altogether right and he still wins now Nathan this leads me into my next point, which is this. Oh, good. Things left unresolved from this movie that I need to talk about. Good. One, before this tournament, Dickhead Knight, we'll call him, the bad guy, <laughs> goes, yes, you know, like, I'm I'm such a dick that I'm sexist too. I view, I view women as my horses. Blah, oh, blah, Jesus blah. Christ. He's such a dick. See, so he's all like, oh, just so you know, man to man, I've entered negotiations with her father. And Heath's like, oh, shit, I didn't think about that because I'm a fucking <laughs> He's like, mm, I will win her. She will be mine. Okay, so this is left unanswered, right? Yes. So we can presume that, like, this dick is going to, like, end up with the girl, though, because, you know, we live in medieval times, and, like, he has land to offer, and Heath's got fucking shit all. Yeah. Right? So this guy's going to win, and, and he, this woman's going to be his wife. So Heath's going to be depressed about that. Never mind the fact that he's probably just going on adrenaline, but we can imagine that not long after this tournament ends that Heath's probably going to die, if not from the wound itself, from the infection yeah, that this wound's going to cause. Yeah. Right, so he tipped the lance, all right? There's a bit of, like, rusty, disgusting metal embedded in his organs at the moment, right? Oh, yeah. This man's a dead... He's a dead man walking at this point. Okay, so so what this movie tells us, basically, is that Heath Ledger, the most likable guy ever, basically is a dead man walking, right? He will die, and bad dude will still end up with this random girl who does not want to be married to him at all. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of your ending. I think so. The only people that end out of this, like, you know, in a happy way is, like, Paul Bettany, who's all like, oh, sweet, I won the bet. Yes. I didn't learn my lesson in gambling, but I won the bet. And they kind of, like, nod and wink to a camera where it's like, hmm, maybe I should write some poems about this. And then it's like, oh, yes, Jeffrey Chaucer, didn't you write The Canterbury Tales? Ha, 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 ha. It's like... That, that is a funny joke. I fucking hate oh, that in movies, Brenton. I'm sick of that, too. I'm so sick of, like, it's like Einstein being like, oh, maybe I should write down this formula. It's like, shut the fuck up. We know what you're famous for. Shush. I've never gotten around it. I feel like there's an example I want to think of. Movies do this all the fucking time. Where, like, the <laughs> they famous, do. They do. The famous person's like, oh, well, maybe that would make a good song. Or maybe like, make, that would make a good book yeah. and they're like and they write that shit yeah, down yeah. yeah it's like it's bloody game of thrones where it's like oh huh, this would make a good novel you know or bloody lord of the rings they do this too by the way it's like oh huh, this is a good adventure we should write a book out of this let's call it the lord of the rings it's like shut the fuck up it's like okay <laughs> i don't know why this pisses me off but it does renton i'm like i don't want this meta bullshit in here we know you're telling a fucking story jesus christ get off your fucking high horse with your books and all that Sorry, that was. Well, Nathan, that was I'm going to call it right now. <laughs> this this conversation's put me in mind in the mind that I want to write a story about it. Maybe I'll write a book or a poem or a ballad. Oh. And then, so now I've said that. Hopefully, if I do something in the future, I'll be like, "Wow, look at this back in the day." That you was know, the and moment. they'll make a movie about this episode of the podcast, and I'll make that comment. And everyone will be like, "Tee hee!" In the audience, that's the dude that wrote that shitty story about the <laughs> yeah. podcast. I know. You know it's really funny. The poetry of Jeffrey Chaucer is genuinely brilliant and, and like so well acclaimed. So it's kind of funny that he speaks and acts like this in the movie. Because if he genuinely wrote this little film down as his like poetry experience, it would be horseshit, Brenton. <laughs> like it would it would fade into obscurity, Jeffrey Chaucer. Oh, that's funny. Uh, well, Nathan, should we do some special segments? Yeah, let's get into it, bud. Special segment. Ooh, 
so special. I wanted to start with, uh, because you brought it up before, what movie did this better? Robin Hood? the Kevin Costner version, or this movie, Night's Tale, starring Heath Ledger. Yes. We haven't heard um, what movie did this better in a while, so I wanted to bring it back. Because there's a very clear comparison, as I was watching this, between, you know, the medieval world, struck, you know, built by Robin Hood, Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, and this one here. Let's let's put in a scenario, Brenton. Would you rather be a part of, like, Kevin Costner's little society, where, you know, you're in, like, the Merry Wood and all that kind of shit, or would you rather be, like, a fan in this audience, being a part of, like, the Justing Society? Which one would you rather be in? Okay, so I'd rather be in Night's Tale, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because because Heath Ledger plays a peasant that becomes a fucking knight by the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very valid point. There is there is hope. That is quite true. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right. But do you th- okay, which one do you think is then more accurate to medieval times? Neither. <laughs> Neither. That's the correct answer. Well done. It, it is weird that we have yet to cover a medieval film that properly, you know, illustrated this period. But also, like, there's not that many out there that are really, really good in that sense. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's like, I don't want any of this shit. Like, I know. I agree. I'd probably live in the, the Night's Tale world as well. Because I feel like if you're in Kevin Costa society, just get ambushed all the bloody time. You know what I mean? If I wanted a job made in the Night's Tale, I'd just go find Heath Ledger and be like, oh, hey, I can do this. And he'd be like, you're hot. And if you have any gambling <laughs> debts, I'll pay for them. And you'll be like, sweet man, cheers. He's an idiot for letting Paul Bentley gamble again. It's like, that's a sheer miracle he doesn't lose all the money by the end of it, you know? Like, oh, yeah. that's true. Nathan, this is a this is a favorite special segment, but I want to ask you, which two characters should have kissed? Oh. Because I've got an answer. Oh, Brenton, please go, for, go forth. It's obvious that this movie is drawing a saucy romance between Paul... <laughs> Paul Bettany, oh, yes. and also uh, Alan Tudyk's of characters. Course. You know, they're always at each other's throats, and I feel like what would have meant the world <laughs> to both of these men is if they just leaned in and just gave an old Frenchie. Just put the tongue in, gotten down, gotten dirty, just just given in to their emotions. Yeah. And it's great as well because we can carry across this to other works that they're both in as well, Brenton. As we know, both yes. Paul Bentley and Alan Tudyk are in Star Wars movies. You know, Alan Tudyk playing mm-hmm. K2SO and Paul Bentley playing, um, you know, that gangster fucker in Solo, a Star Wars story. I can yes. even see Paul Bentley in his weird scar from that movie having a little bit of a smack with this robot, K2SO. Yeah, I can see that too. I think I think that's a crossover waiting to happen. And I think potentially maybe you could, I don't know, have some other cast members from this join in. Maybe Mark Addy can rock up and be like, oh, hey, you know, like... Seven kingdoms, Ned. <laughs> Seven <laughs> kingdoms. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One king. You know how bloody difficult it is? <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> I've gotten fat. He's so fucking good at Game of Thrones. I'm so sad we only got him for like half a season. Like, oh, he is. He's so good. I wish he was in it more. Oh. He's so fucking good. Even yeah. like just a little prequel with him, just like, you know, just fucking about, just like, you know, just Cersei just being so upset they can't have sex, you know, like him going hunting, like, oh, seeing him be a dad to Joffrey, I would love that, man. Yeah. Oh, could you imagine a sitcom based around Robert Baratheon? Have you seen that? Have you seen like Game of Thrones done as a sitcom on YouTube? No, man. No. Oh my God. You If you haven't as well, listeners, Google this. On YouTube, there's like a sitcom edit of Game of Thrones where it has like laugh tracks and like cheesy music and it's so fucking good and Robert's in it. So, like, give it a bloody good. I have to check it out. That oh, sounds like fun. It's a good time, man. Brenton, should this movie be a musical? I actually think this movie would be a really good musical. I agree. I actually think I actually think it would be. It's 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 hard for me to admit that because I'm always the guy that's like, not everything needs to be a musical, but I think mm. there's enough in this that would make um, a really fun musical. I agree. And I think people would get around it. Yeah. I th- yeah. Also, I think it helps as well because it is so musical in the first place. Like, we have all these, yes, like, you know, exactly. we have dance numbers, we have these musical tracks. Would you want it to retain the 80s? music for the musical or do you want to have like an original score i'd like it to retain some of it like i think it'd be fun to have mm. a finale where it's all like we do some of the songs but i think it needs original music as well yeah and also like the sheer fact of being in a live audience and seeing jousting on a stage i think it could work so well theatrically like i agree i think it'd be so cool and so much fun would you would you want them to bring back like macready and like you know paul bentley and all that um yeah why not like why not bring the crew back together let's let's make it happen should you replace heath with chris hemsworth uh if Heath, if uh sorry if if chris can get some singing lessons then why not? Anything's possible. That's true. I'd love to hear Chris sing. I don't think I've ever heard him sing. Yeah, he must have sung at some point. We should give him a call and see if uh, he'll <laughs> sing on the show. Like, Chris, I know you're in Byron's and uh, tell you what, can you sing a number? And he's like, how did you get this phone? <laughs> yeah. And lastly, Brenton, would this movie be a perfect bar theme? Any bar that has a medieval theming to it mm. is automatically best bar. Like, that is that is a real time. Like, that would be so much fun. Could you imagine oh, going dude. to a bar in this theming? 
Like, oh, imagine going to that dance, for instance, that's in this film. Oh, that'd be so cool, Having man. a few drinks and having a good time. All right, the closest I've done, because I've never been to a medieval bar before, the closest I've done to Me it either. was um in Brisbane. There was there used to be a bar there. It's not there anymore called the Manor Bar. And it was like a video game-themed right. bar. But they had like medieval-themed drinks. as like, it's like a video game tie-in. And some of the best alcohol right. I've ever had was a drink called Assassin's Mead. And it was in like this like huge Ooh. stein. And it was based on obviously Assassin's Creed. But I was like filled with this like this like weird cocktail. And it was so cool, dude. And I'm like, and it was like the, the old and like, you know, medieval cups that they had, like the the steins. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is yeah. this is cool, man. I want to go to a medieval bar. This would be bloody brilliant. I'll go with you. I think that'd be really fun. Would we would we dress up for it? Would we rock up as like two jesters being like, you know? I, w- I would I would wear my uh, court attire. I'd wear like, you know, something akin to Shakespeare with like the puffy pants. That'd be great. I feel, I feel like, okay, if you're going to do that, I'll rock them like, you know, peasant scarves. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. I think they'll work really well. And like today, tonight we wear green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Done deal. Shake on that and let's get going after the episode. All right. Well, let's see what stills this movie. <laughs> Blinding. So in case you all don't know, What Stills This Movie is a segment on the show where Nathan or myself pick uh, still a single frame from the film we are reviewing. And we pick that on the basis of it being usually quite funny or just being a beautiful piece of cinematography. Of art. This is one of the rare weeks we, we genuinely pick a still because it's beautiful. <laughs> like It's nice. It's it's the scene in the movie yeah. where Heath Ledger, he's in a bloody church. and um, Oh, sorry. He's in a church. And he's trying to woo, you know, the love interest of this film. And the camera does a really cool thing where it feels like we're looking at, like, different mosaic murals of, like, this church. Mm. It feels like we're in, like, this art gallery because the camera pans across this beautiful kind of, like, steady shot where we see kind of, like, you know, the, the church goers doing doing their shit in the background. We see like the stained glass windows. And then there's Heath in the center with the love interest, just trying to chat about, you know, getting together, having some roots. And it pans to each different room as it goes like back and forth on like on their conversation. And I think it's really well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the dollying is really, really good in this. And I like that it just stays on the same level. And uh, because like the buildings are obviously quite similar in the sense of like, you know, every window's got its own. Uh, it's quite similar to the last one. It's it's fun to just follow the characters through this world in that moment. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really quite a nice moment. Especially because like, you know, I think the norm for this scene in particular would have been to get in close. But this whole scene is like one shot uh, from a distance. So yeah. Kudos to the filmmakers. Interesting choice. Yeah, interesting choice indeed. Well, hey. Hey. Let's look at this film's poster. Blenton. Yes. Let's look at this film's poster. But is it art? Nathan, I'm so disappointed. Oh my goodness. Why, poster designers, would you do this? I mean, it's Heath Ledger. He's a good looking dude. He is a good looking dude, but what? Like, all the poster is is just a zoom in shot of Heath's face with a little red background and with the tagline, He Will Rock You, to the title A Knight's Tale. Like, this tells me nothing about the movie. Like, I gotta tell you, so my DVD copy of A Knight's Tale had a different poster. Oh, good, because I probably learned that lesson from the theatrically released poster. To be fair, it was, it had, it incorporated the theatrical release poster. So it had this in the background, oh. right? As in like a... <laughs> Could you imagine that as a watermark? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but in the foreground, in a faded image, was two nights jousting. Oh, yeah, way better. Because it actually lets you know what the movie's about. Exactly. So I, I liked the DVD cover... Uh, the the poster way better than this one. Yeah, this is just nonsense, mate. And it's like I don't even remember. Like I don't even know what his hair's doing in this movie. It looks as though he's kind of just like tied it back in like a little bun. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But like, like, yeah, he's a handsome dude. But like, where's everyone else? This is so much more than just Heath. Like, like yeah, he's a protagonist. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many goofy side characters. Like, come on. Like they should they should have put just like you know Paul Bettany's ass in the poster if anything. Yeah, absolutely. Or like that shot of like Paul Bettany like chewing between his toenails to get like the uh, the splinter out or whatever. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I think that would have been a great poster. <laughs> <laughs> or just that shot where like Paul Bentley walks into frame for the first time naked and you see in the background the three men just like staring at him weirdly. Even that would have been like a better yeah. poster. Like In which case, title talk. <laughs> Ooh, it's the title. Was there a Knight's Tale on a Knight's Tale? Oh! I just immediately want to think of the pun of like T-A-I-L. I'm like, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. A knight's tale. Was it a tale about a knight? I guess it was. Is Heath the titular knight? I mean, there were several knights in this movie, He is. There? Of course he is. He's the knight that became, he he became the knight during the Ooh. film. He, 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 <laughs> He's just like, I am the knight. <laughs> he just like Batman's it. Like. But my question with the title talk is that I think it's an okay title, but uh, if you were to call it something else and incorporate what you were saying before about Heath, uh, sorry, Paul Bettany's ass, what would you call it? A knight's ass? Yeah, that's a good one. Or maybe ass by day, ass by night. Right? But not his spelt with a K. Ooh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good. I do love that Heath was in A Knight's Tale, and then later he did do his Oscar-winning performance for a du- for The Dark Knight. Yes. Maybe maybe we could call this movie like The Poor Knight or something like that. You know, as a little echo <laughs> of, of, yeah. of Chris Nolan's the Poor film. Knight. Yeah, The Poor Knight. You know, sure, sure. Give it, 
Give homage, yeah. There must, there must be a fan edit somewhere of, like, uh, Gary Oldman doing his speech at the end of A Dark Knight saying, you know, he's the hero Gotham needs, you know, the one and only, the Dark Knight. And then just, like, pants like Heath Ledger just being like, woo! <laughs> on, like, a horse. <laughs> like, like, it must be out there <laughs> yeah, somewhere, absolutely. surely. Yeah, like, his training montage at the start, like, cut to that of him being like, faster, Roland, faster, faster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, Heath, you're meant to be stabbing the guy on the horse. And he's like, no, 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 I killed the bus driver. <laughs> and they're just like <laughs> <laughs> well Nathan shall we do the final segment of the show and pass all this power to the people let's do it pass it here what the power to the people so if you all or y'all or <laughs> y'all on head, head over to, to the rotten tomatoes if, <laughs> if you head over to some rotten tomato meters uh, you'll find that The Knight's Tale has a critical consensus of 59% with an audience score of 79%. That is 20% different between the audience and the critic. Good math, Branson. Well done, buddy. Here's another cookie for you. Good job. Oh, thanks, mate. Ah. Oh, oh. I know. Ooh, ooh. The, the CMB cookie jar is a little bit off. I need to replace them. <laughs> <laughs> but box office wise, hey, this made some money. It didn't make a lot, but this cost sixty five million to make. Jesus, where did this movie does not look as though it cost sixty five million? Like, where did that money nah, go? Nah, not at all. Nah, not at all. Yeah, it made one hundred seventeen mil, so it's something. But geez, like, I was surprised the critics didn't give it that much higher. Because yeah, maybe it's missing themes and you know depth and all that kind of shit. But like, yeah, it's, I don't think it's. I would have liked to have seen it sit at least in the sixties, but uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, just one more percent. Forrest Hart from Reno Gazette Journal. I gave it a positive review, though, and said, Knight's Tale does suffer from a predictable follow-the-dots plot, but it's so well executed, anyone willing to have a good time will readily buy in. Yeah, I, probably. I think that's a good summation of it. Like, What is Forrest trying to say here, though, that if you're not willing to have a good time, you won't enjoy it? That's true. I, so you have to be willing. But if you're in a bad mood, I feel like this would change you to a good mood. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. If I was cranky, I'd put this thing on. This would this would brighten my day. <laughs> I'm so cranky. I need to watch A Night's Tale. <laughs> but it didn't Robin, Rob Vaughs a day from Flipside Movie Emporium. He didn't Ooh. like it, Brent, and he's very cranky. He gave it a C. He said, the sort of film that junior high school students will adore and then rent 10 years later from now and wonder what they were thinking <laughs> <laughs> Which I get, man. Yeah, like Rob, I I always regret and and wonder what I'm thinking. But uh, in this case, you know, I'm I'm happy to stand by it and say it's a good time. It's true. It is true. Like I, it would take a lot for someone to vehemently hate this, if that makes sense. Like it's just too crowd pleasing. Mikar gave the film five stars and said, "In the age of season eight Game of Thrones, this is a godsend." <laughs> <laughs> okay, how would you have felt if they ended Game of Thrones this way? Would it be a better or worse ending? <laughs> like they all what? just jump. Worse. About. Okay, so like, what if Danny? Uh, like maybe. Oh, literally. So like, John maybe is like, you know, he's been like, he's been found to be a naughty boy. Yes. And then Bran comes along and is all like, "I'm Prince Edward, and I'm gonna pardon you and make you a knight." And then like, Rob comes. Uh, sorry, John comes back. He's like, "Hey, I'm a knight now." And him and Danny like get it on. And it's like, we will. We <laughs> will <laughs> there would still be not the worst ending. Like, I can so yeah. see it where like maybe like Danny's just you know obliterated. By the way, spoiler for Game of Thrones. <laughs> but where like Danny's like obliterated King's Landing, and you think like you know no one alive can stop Daenerys Targaryen. She's unstoppable now. She's too powerful. Then out of the ashes runs Heath Ledger on a fucking horse, just with a joust. Well, you could. Literally do an edit of that scene from one of the earlier episodes in that final season when um Jamie's oh uh, and for season seven when he's about to stab Daenerys yeah 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 no sorry it is season seven yeah when he's like looking to like stab yeah exactly um and um and Tyrion's on like the hill saying you fucking idiot don't do it like <laughs> so I think like you could change that to like a Night's Tale and I think it'd work perfectly oh. like Heath like trying to like joust the dragon and just like Robert Baratheon his back is just cheering him on just like yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still the king bitches so this is a five star review. And it says, while this film will never win an Oscar, <laughs> what a way to start. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it to be the golden standard for educating young children in the history classes of tomorrow. <laughs> it makes history down to earth and approachable, all the while highlighting how privileged we are in the modern world. We could all participate in sports like just <laughs> 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 Eat well and change our stars with a little imagination, <laughs> hard work, stars. and dedication. <laughs> Lastly, it subconsciously suggests to ki- <laughs> it subconsciously suggests to kids that interrelation. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I gotta say this last sentence. I gotta get it out. Uh, oh. Lastly, it subconsciously suggests to kids that interracial relationships are cool. <laughs> This is a real review on Ron Tomatoes. I love it. I love everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do 
we need we, do we even need to comment on this? Just, like holy I crap. Mean, that's the that's the funniest thing I've read in a while. Could you imagine us in the same history class just like watching this movie? Look, teachers are all everywhere. <laughs> teachers everywhere. Teachers all around the world. Listen up. Don't put on a night's table oh, to cheat. Jeez. To teach your students about about our everyday life in medieval England, it will not work. <laughs> also, <laughs> oh. I really felt in my subconscious that I was being taught about the importance of interracial relationships. <laughs> um, YouTube, uh, Bink- Binky Magnus wrote on YouTube. I remember oh, seeing this when it came out, sitting there thinking, shit. this sounds so familiar. And then Angel, and then the Angel line. And I thought, no, this cannot be. Everyone in the theatre laughed and clapped when the Bowie dropped. One of the best audience reactions I've ever heard. Nathan, do you wish you'd seen this in the cinema? Absolutely, Brenton. I thought I think this would have been amazing in the movies. Like, to see with a live audience and just be clapping along and singing. It'd be like a bloody yeah, Rocky Yeah, do you wish you'd show. seen it in the cinema? Yeah, absolutely, dude. Would you? Yeah, man, of course. I would have I would have seen this in a heartbeat oh, as a child. Oh, yeah. beautiful. You would have seen most things in a heartbeat, wouldn't you, mate? Oh, uh, mostly anything, really. Uh. So, Burn- Z- Burns commented on YouTube and said, So, this is how Robert spent his time in the years he and Ned hadn't seen each other. So, when he's all like, you got old, and then Ned's all like, yeah, no, but he's all like, you got fat, and Ned's <laughs> like, what did you do? And then he's like, ah, so funny. So he packed on the pounds, like, helping, uh, just imagine a world where basically, like, this was Robert Baratheon's backstory. I would love that, man. Like, I mean, they always talk about what a legendary warrior Robert was, and he didn't even ride the horse this movie, so, like... I I kind of I kind of wish we saw how that happened, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love me too. I mean, like, why not? Yeah, give exactly. us a, give us the give us the prequel to Robert's Rebellion. But yeah, that was a Knight's Tale. We did it. We told the tale, Brenton. We're better than Chaucer himself. And speaking <laughs> of a Knight's Tale, thank you one and all for joining us for another episode, another week, Brenton. And you know what's even more exciting than Paul Bentley's speeches? Huh, him naked? Yes, well done, Brenton. <laughs> and look, we can't show images of Paul Bentley naked on the internet because someone might sue. So instead, we've got another project that we've been doing halfway through the week. Oh, what's that, Nathan? It's Feature Fridays with the Band of Boys, Brenton. It's our new podcast for this year. A new podcast that we released this year? Nathan, I'm a listener that's uh, listened to their first episode of 2021, and I've got no idea what Feature Fridays with the Band of Boys entails. It's a show where we talk about things that are happening today in the movie world. We talk about topics that are that you listeners suggest to us, that you write in to us. We talk about stuff that is speaking to the movie news of the week. So we kind of just talk about what's what you want to talk about. If you love movies and you love chatting about movies, but you need some friends you can, you can hear about that from we'll be your friends we'll hold your hands we'll chat about movies yeah at a price of zero dollars what more could you want so yeah um <laughs> we're on all the we're on the bloody links all the links are below if you want to tap and have a listen and we'll see you on friday for some more chats sounds good both about this and a night's tale we just mirror them together it's great because we like mirrors we do brenton put that one down <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to look at yourself while we record this sorry i got distracted feel free to send us an email to our email uh letting us know what classic movies you want us to review or any any comments or concerns that you I know the reason we didn't do a listener letter this week is because Brenton was so insistent on a night's tale he was like forget all the all the suggestions we've got to do this you've been delaying it long enough so now that we've gotten it out of the way please listeners give us literally anything else to watch I mean what can I say I'm just a bit of a tyrant on this show Nathan I'd also like to inquire that the listeners give us their reviews on the iTunes uh, the iTunes store you know give us your thoughts give us what you thought of the show like our content join the Instagram we do some fun stuff there be part of the club man yeah just come join the classic movie banter club get on board this Sam Raimi train and uh, we'll see you all very (laughs) Very soon. Uh, for, for so much more Sam Raimi coming up, we'll, we'll never get rid of them. He'll never go away. No. If anything, he's coming back. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> thank you for joining me this week. And uh, yeah, let's do it all again later this week. All right. Well, now that we've been shouting at each other from either end of this jousting field, shall we finally charge at each other, Brenton? I think it's time. Ready yourselves. Good. Because my host is getting uncomfortable sitting on here for the past hour. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to charge. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. wake mine up now. <laughs> Sorry. We've been sitting here for an hour. All right. You ready? I'm ready. So down the bugle presenting the best podcasters this side of the sydney river it's brenton and nathan jousting each other for a shitty trophy here we go three two one yeah. <laughs> wait a minute that's not a jousting stick brenton's holding that's that's a real sword oh no i'm screwed ah oh, he went straight for the heart thanks for the advice willem <laughs>